Hello, welcome to Answering Griffin's Vocational Series in MATLAB Tutorials. Today we're looking at uh, blob detection using SURF that speeds up robust features. And it won't be that technical a discussion because really either that's for another thing, but it's just sort of the pitfalls that one might use. So I used uh, the MATLAB uh, practical example, uh, photostitching.m, that's in the computer vision toolbox. And I heavily commented it. So let me just scroll down here. So where we are there at the moment with the mouse is that would be the MATLAB have a test set of data. And we just look at the montage here below. So there's the montage. And this, there's just, there's five of them. So well, whichever I was going to say it's cheat, but let's say it's reasonably idealized in that there's no trees, the illumination is fairly constant, and there's reasonably well defined um, corners. Now, the only problem here is that there's, the corners are quite similar. So, yeah, that would be the, the a problem. But what MATLAB have done in this, they've just lost my mouse one second. What MATLAB have done is they've taken a reasonable amount of overlap between the two photos and just got my mouse back there. So you can see where the mouse is now, there must be 30, 40, 50%. So if you are doing this, you'd want 30, 40, 50% and you'd like nice defined uh, corners because uh, when SURF is using those wavelet theories to detect the corners, you so you want nice to find corners and repeat myself. So you register the image pairs. Surf, if I just slow down there a sec. So we mentioned the old Haar wavelets and the Hessian matrix. So that's not for this. And there's the advantage in its fast computation. That would be compared to SIFT. But it's still computationally expensive, but it's quicker than SIFT. And there's the magic soft detect surface features, extract the features, and here I get the projective 2D. So we're getting a 2D projection. Oh, that's one other thing, just to go back there. Uh, it's a little bit of a cheat, but you're relatively far back when taking the photos. And while you can reasonably assume that it's 2D, now obviously we just look at there, there's quite a step, so it's not exactly 2D, but just as an approximation, it's okay for this particular example. So as I said before, I'm not going to go through the MATLAB code. It's more the, the outcome I'd look at. And there's the panorama. Now as I go over again, there's a result in, it's not awful. It's not great either. So remember before, about the illumination, we'll have some other examples in a minute. The illumination is reasonably constant here, so you don't get, you know, there's no need to do a blended illumination. And also, but you are getting the noticeable banding is the correct term. So there's banding there, there's banding there, etc. Okay, so that's that one done. Uh, Next one up, I did mention that the last time, but recurring problem is visible seams are banding. Okay, and presence of parallax, small scene motion, such as waving tree branches and large scale image of people moving or cars moving. So you, know, you need to do bundle adjustment for that. So there's my plane. 
And in this one, I didn't do enough overlap. So there's going to be a lot of problems here and here. Okay, and there's a lot of problems here. So if we just scroll down to the end, they're quite similar. The banding wasn't enough, or sorry, the overlap wasn't enough, and there's quite pronounced banding as well. So just to, just not enough overlap, I would say. It's that one out of the way. Next one up is a rather, sorry, the rather misty Shanghai. So you know in advance what's this trying to pick out corners, or you know, when I say corners, well defined points that would that surf could work on is going to be fairly uh, awkward here. Uh, and there was only three images, so that's uh, in this one. So if we go down, not too bad, but what's happened here? Well, remember, there's, there's large amounts of depth here, large amounts of depth. So remember, in here, if I can find it now, uh, there's projective 2D. I can't Fine, just give me one sec. I have to do a little control F. Uh, 2D. Yeah. So there uh, we were creating the 2D transformation. So when we go down to here, just look at the end. The 2D projection is going to be off. We need to look at the 3D. So that's another problem. The buildings. The montage has to be ideally planar, or at least, you know, the depth is minimal. Next one up is a uh, Kuala Lumpur. Same problems again. Uh, overlap is pretty brutal, etc. Oh, there is another image over here. It just didn't display. There's five images here. Again, we have problems with the perspective because there's so much depth. So that's really a piece of the last one. So, and also the illumination, you know, the, the, the clouds were fairly fast moving. So, you know, in some of the bespoke photo position software, it would take the illumination of the various photos and it would do a blend. So at least the illumination looks reasonably constant. And finally, one other problem. Uh, I took a mantelpiece scene, and there's 12 photos in this, and I ran out of memory. So the, when you do it, when I did it here, when I ran the things, it was 2 by 10 to the 11 was the number of bytes, and my computer would give me 8 by 10 to the 9. So the thing just crashed. So that's another problem. If you have large amounts of uh, data, uh, MATLAB is going to struggle. So that's just another problem. So it's more the pitfalls of the photo montage in MATLAB than anything else. Okay, so hope that's of some help. Thanks very much for listening.